Hey everyone, Bob Kendall here. Just want to thank you all for watching my videos. If you do want to support the channel, go to www.kendallreport.com slash wavetech. Sign up for our software. You get market grid on 165 individual stocks and indices. You also will get 16,500 buy and sell signals on our entire database. I thank you so much for supporting the channel. Those of you who have already signed up, thank you so much. Welcome everyone to the Kendall Report where I share my 41 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. As we enter into the middle of November, we're seeing plenty of action overnight. The S&P is up nearly 1% in the futures. We're seeing the NASDAQ, everything following through from last week's strength. And one of the first things that's happened after the election is China has stepped up big time. They just did the largest trade deal in history with all the Asia Pacific countries. No tariffs, no nothing. They excluded the U.S., so does that tell you anything about the posture of China already, about how they're going to handle the world going forward? They don't see any resistance going forward, so they're playing this out. Meanwhile, markets love it. As I mentioned, the S&P's up nearly 1%, so there's a big bid in the markets. There's a bid in Asia. There's a bid in the U.S. futures, and it looks like game is on, globalization. China looks to take as much control as they can as we go forward. That's nothing more than a statement of what's happening in the markets. One of the things I learned a long time ago, going all the way back to Ronald Reagan days, is you go with the flow. If there's new tax changes and new events happening in the economy, then go to where the flow is going. And those are the things that I'll be talking about as we go forward, as the markets are going to be looking to new levels of taxation. I won't go through a lot of detail, but there's a lot of events, especially around capital gains and other things that are likely to happen, probably not so much in 2021, but certainly in 2022 and beyond, there's going to be a substantial change in real estate and other taxation that goes on. Now, when I first started in the markets in 1979, Reagan came in and deregulated everything, lowered the tax rate from this around 50 to 60 percent under Jimmy Carter, and we got a drastically reduced rate down into the teens on capital gains. The markets exploded. This time it's interesting that we are seeing a positive event around the taxation, but it's very early since we still have a lot of the uncertainty flowing around the actual election itself and whether or not it will end up in Congress, the Supreme Court, who knows what's next. The reality is, is that the market is playing into the narrative and China is definitely stepping up with this trade deal that they did. It was announced out of Singapore earlier today. As we look forward to this week, we're seeing the peak of earnings last week and now we're seeing them start to wind down over the next two weeks. There's roughly 308 reports coming out this week. We do have Walmart, Lowe's and Home Depot are big numbers that are going to come out this week that will give us some reflection of what's going on in the economy. As we look at the economic events that are coming out this week, we've got Empire State Manufacturing coming out on Monday. On Tuesday, we have retail sales. I think those will be looked at pretty closely. We really skip forward until Thursday in those claims and the continuing claims numbers that I discuss every week. Now, the claims are expected to be around 725. They came in about 50,000 less last week. So a lot of these are rotating numbers, by the way, on the claims. I see comments on the channel that the claims are still really high. They are. There's a lot of rotation that happens in the claims numbers. The continuing claims numbers, meanwhile, have dropped from nearly 20 million down to 6.8. And I'm expecting to see them continue down below 6 million over the next couple months. This number is likely to continue. Now, if they do start to lock down some of the economy, as I said in Friday's video, I don't believe that's gonna have the material effect of what we saw back in March and April when the original shutdowns happened. There's a lot of the markets that have already adapted to this change, and the ones that haven't or can't are still under effect of 
what's happened. We know all of those things, the airlines and other events that have happened. Now, I've heard reports from out in the field that the airlines and the airports are doing a little better than most people think they are. There's a fair amount of activity between certain markets anyway. But as we look forward to the rest of the week, we're looking at this narrative, all the tariffs coming off the board, and we're back into a similar world that we knew during the Obama and Biden administration in the past. Matter of fact, a lot of the cabinet members and people are being mentioned, nothing more than a regurgitated Obama administration, at least it appears that way for the most part. Now, these aren't political statements. They're just what's going on and what we're going to have to deal with as we go forward in looking at the markets and how they're likely to react. Right now, markets are acting very favorable. It has a lot to do with the lack of tariffs going forward, as well as a lot of these alliances that are going to be formed around the world. We'll see how it plays out for America down the road. But for at the moment, markets like it. We're going with the flow. In just a few minutes, I'll go through the details of what's going on in our database and what's going on in the technicals, because there's plenty there to talk about. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts and see how they're setting up for this week. As we begin the review of the database, we're going to the Portfolio Export Dashboard, and we're going to look at the activity on the intermediate level. Three weeks ago, we saw a massive amount of liquidations, 2,415. Then the following week, we saw 2,200 buy orders, and then we saw 1,800 buy orders come in this week. This has pushed the database back up into a very bullish mode overall around 64%. But as we look at the sectors, we're seeing a lot of positive rotation. I talked about this two weeks ago that I expected to see a rotation back into the database. Well, we're seeing it in a big way, both on an intermediate and a short-term level. I'll go through some details tonight because before we will get into a really overbought situation, the percent bullish in itself does not indicate that it's overbought just yet. There's some other metrics that I'll go through here in a minute that you'll need to understand. But as we go down and take a look at the groups, you'll see a lot of dark green that comes up, and that is actually reflecting the new buys that are coming into the individual groups. As we go over to the WaveTech database, we look at the intermediate database. We're now back at 64.80%. Three weeks ago, we were at 62%. We drop back to 40 and two weeks later, we're right back to 64%. Now, I haven't seen this type of volatility in a database like this, but we have managed to remain in a overall bullish mode throughout all the volatility we saw around the elections. As we look at the sectors, we see basic materials, conglomerates, consumer cyclical, consumer non-cyclical, those are all up in the double digits, and they've been on for about 118 days. The minimum has been the consumer non-cyclical up 94 days, up 20%. Now, the new ones that come in are healthcare and technology. They're slightly underwater, but they've only been on for a week. So look for those to continue to recover. But as we go to the daily, we'll see that there was about 900 new buys less than 100 cells. We have bullish ratios on that. On the weekly database, we actually saw 3,600 total buys, only 160 cells. So you notice that the sentiment or the positive rotation is bullish across the board, both on the short and intermediate term models. Now, the Daily models have moved up to a 64.37% bullish. And as I mentioned a minute ago, this does not necessarily mean it's negative once it gets up to these higher levels. As we look over to the left here, we'll see the average days long is 40. The current average days long are only 11. This number will have to get up into the 30 days or more before we'll start to look at an overbought situation and start to talk about some type of retracement or correctional phase to begin. On a weekly basis, the optimized weekly is 202 days. Right now, the average days is 69 days. So we're only right now 21.3% 
realize. So there is a lot to look forward to, anywhere from 140 to about 160 days on average going forward. That pushes us way into Q2 of 2021. There's a lot of of returns that are looking forward here. The current profit is about 34% realized, so there's still a lot to go there. The average profit is 29%, and we currently have realized about 10% of that. So there's another 20% just on an average looking at this large database of 16,500. As we begin with the S&P futures, we've already traded up into the R2 number, 3612. The high so far overnight has been 3615, the low 3586. S1 is 3567, so we didn't even get close to an S1 number. But it looks like we could print as high as R3 today as we move up towards some of these minimum objective numbers. As we look at this yellow and red lines above the market, the minimum target for this market has already been realized at 35.68. We exceeded that. We also closed on Friday well above the 30, 35.76 number that needed to signal the breakout. We're already getting the breakout tonight. But the upward targets for this pattern suggests that we are going to at least to 3699. I'll, I'll be able to fine tune these numbers a little bit better, but in general, on a short term basis, 3699, we'll call it 3700 to 3780 is the next target out of this pattern. Now we're seeing the PPMs of 0 0.90, 0 0.21, and 0.24. We are in trend mode across the board and we're likely to see this thing just continue to move higher in the pattern. As we continue to review the weekly S&P futures, we look at the market grid for this week. R1, 3634. As I mentioned, our high so far tonight's been 3615, so we're likely to go to at least an R1. R2 is 3692, very close to that upward objective I showed you on the Fibonacci projections at 3699. So R2 is likely. I don't think we'll see an S1 3529. That's not very likely based on how we're trading at the moment. So this pattern, we look at the PPMs. PPM1 is now at point, a plus 0.86. PPM2, 0.88. PPM3, a 0.21. These are positive across the board. We're in an intermediate uptrend. A short-term uptrend, intermediate uptrend. As we go and review the SPX on a weekly basis, we'll see that the expectations here are for R1, 3631. That's likely to be hit early Monday, Tuesday. R2, 3683. So these numbers are slightly different just because the configuration and the futures are different. But we're going to see minimum R1, but most likely an R2 range this week. On the downside, 3538 appears to be completely out of play at the moment. If we look at the PPMs, they're all turning up on a weekly basis as well. What I want to go to next is look at the secular charts or the monthly. And it's interesting that we have exceeded through the RXT number, which is 3578. We're, we're, but we're also seeing the PPMs just explode and reverse here. PPM 1, 1.15. PPM 2, 1.26. PPM 3, 0.97. These are very robust trends. I've been talking about this for the last. The underlying secular trends are very powerful. There is no probabilities of any major declines. Now, a number of weeks ago, I thought we might decline down to the 10-month moving average, which was at the time down around 3,100. But those numbers got completely blown out of, out of the water when we saw the reversal right after the election. That configuration was negated, and now we're, we're seeing a much higher number come into play. And we've got a long ways to go. We're likely to trade well above this RTX number on a monthly basis. And what this tells us, the monthly volatility is expanding and that we're going to see an acceleration out of this pattern.
The next market I'll cover is NASDAQ futures. As we look at the market grid for today, you'll see that we've traded up to 12,065. R2 is 12,049, so we're trading just above the R2 number. We're likely to see an R3 number at least 12,110. The key number in this pattern is 11,829, which is the 10-day moving average. It is rising about 100 points per day, so that would be 11,900. Tomorrow will be pretty much where we're trading right now will be that support number as we come into tomorrow. The S1 number, 11,878, doesn't appear to be in play. My expectations is that a minimum of an R3 the possibility of trading up to RXT. But looking at the PPMs, we're seeing a 0.84 on PPM1, PPM2, 0.10, but penetrating through its first and second derivative. And PPM3 is at 0.22, also through its first and second derivative. So we're seeing all the short-term trends accelerate. Also in this pattern, as we look at the Fibonacci projections, the minimum target on the upside is 12,534. It's similar to the number that we printed last week as we on Monday we saw a high at 12,408. So that would be slightly above that number. The expectation is we're likely to see the Nasdaq move up toward this 13,343 level over the next five to eight days. This is likely to be a very powerful acceleration to the upside. As we go to the weekly chart, a couple of features here is R1 is 12,156. We're getting close to that number on a weekly basis. R2 matches with the numbers I just discussed on a daily. R2, R3 is likely the target on a weekly basis. Could trade up to the RXT number at 12,878, but everything is pointing higher. PPM1 is at 0.87. PPM2, 0.93, and PPM3 at a 0.61. Now, PPM3 needs to turn up and cut through its second derivative. But for now, the power is now being driven through the 10 and 21-week moving averages, which are going to keep this trend firmly in place. The probabilities of any major downtrend right now are very low. The next market I'll cover is the U.S. dollar. We're seeing a little weakness overnight. We're trading at the 92.60 level. I continue to see a bottoming pattern setting up, but we're becoming somewhat vulnerable to the downside if we can't get a close above the 10-week moving average at 93.24 by Friday. This will set the tone for some lower prices in the dollar. And this, as we're seeing, the PPM starting to roll over. If over the next couple of sessions, we see PPM1 cut through its first derivative. This will be a negative sign. There's a bit of a mixed picture on the PPMs right now. So it's going to be a few more days, and the price action need to remain above the S1 number, which is 92.37. The extreme for this week is 91.21. I don't see us getting down that low, but we could see an S2 number. So R1, S2 is the likely range for the dollar this week. The final market that I will cover tonight is gold. Gold continues to rise back toward the moving averages. On Friday's video, I talked about it moving back toward the 1894 to 1999 level. We have traded up to 1898 overnight. We're currently trading at 1888. We pulled off of that level pretty substantially intraday. The PPMs are not getting any acceleration. So what this suggests is we're likely to stay within the market grid configuration over the next couple of sessions. Now, S1 is 1880, the low overnight 1885. S1, we've already printed an R2 at, at 1898. So S1, R2 number is likely to be the range that we'll trade in today. If we do take out S1, then 1873, and then again, 1867 will be the extreme supports. I still continue to believe that that low at the 1851, 1848 last week will be the significant lows in the pattern. So we look at the weekly charts, we continue to see that phenomena that I talk about. PPM1 is down a minus 0.31, which is 
at 1908 right now. This is the 10-week moving average. PPM2 is at a plus 0.22, and it has actually crossed above the 10-week moving average. That's at 1915. I still see the market being drawn above that level, but with the, this mixed picture, this tells us we're likely to see more consolidation in gold before we can move out of this range. Now, we did see in the last two weeks, we saw it print up into the 1960 level. There was a ton of resistance there. So the absolute broad range on this as we look at this week's market grid is going to be S1, 1865. R1 is 1906. That is likely to be the range that we stay in. If we break out of any range, I think we will expand up to 1929. I don't think we'll see an S2, which would be a new low in the pattern. As I mentioned a minute ago, I believe we'll hold that 1848, 1851 area will be substantial support. If anything happens, we should move toward the 1906 level and continue and even in a very narrow range this week. I don't think we're going to see any breakout in this market. However, if the dollar does weaken, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're likely to see this 1906 maybe move back toward R2 at the extreme at 1929. This will complete the video. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night.